you have you been uh, struck by unexpected um, injuries? Well, stay tuned. You know, don't let it sideline your your passion of archery. So it's time to turn those setbacks into comebacks. So let's navigate through the road of recovering together um, and get you back on target. Uh, welcome to Arch Talk 101. I'm your host, Roy Canterbury. In today's episode, we're focusing on the crucial aspects of archery, staying injury free. Uh, we'll cover the common injuries archers face and how to treat them, and most importantly, how to prevent them. Now, please note that while I'm an experienced archery coach, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, the information provided in this discussion is based on common practices and, and knowledge within the sport of archery. Uh, for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, always consult a qualified healthcare provider. Uh, stay safe and shoot straight. Now, I've got about 35 different sources that I reference uh, to come up with this. I'm just going to summarize it. I'm not going to go in detail in all of them. I'll leave a link to the, the articles that um, um, I've used to reference this at the end. So uh, if you want to take a look at it a little bit more, uh, feel free to look into uh, that uh, that topics individually. So before we dive into today's topic, I remember you can watch this podcast live in Arch Talk 101 Facebook group. Uh, so those that are in the group, they can make comments. Replays are also available in the Arch Talk 101 Facebook group and on my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix It Yourself. Uh, they're also available on archtalk101.com. And for those that prefer to listen to audio while you're driving or whatever, um, you can listen to it on Spotify and audible.com. So that, that's a couple places you can listen to it. And with that, let's get started. Now let's start with shoulder injuries. Um, these are often caused by overuse and improper form. Uh, we have talked about this in the past a little bit on, on some of that. Um, you know, the improper form can lead to conditions like rotate, rotator cuff uh, tears. You know, where you're having that arm up instead of having an arm relaxed down, you got that shoulder pushed up. You see a lot, a lot of archers, you'll see them, that shoulder be pushed up. Well, what's happening in that is it's, it's not lining it up very well. We'll get into a little more detail in that a little bit later. Uh, you know, to prevent the injuries, it's essential to practice the proper technique. We've talked about that in, in some of the last ones. You know, you know, engage, you know, in conditioning exercises, you know, to build your shoulder strength. Uh, you know, there's things that you can do to build them up. Um, you know, just, um, you know, if you know a sports medicine doctor or, some, uh, you know, an athletic trainer, uh, one that knows archery, they can help you with certain techniques that you can do to help that. So let's start, you know, let's get into this. Um, let's understand the injury that is, is going on. You know, mechanics of shoulder injuries in archery, um, you know, that's, you know, we'll talk about that here a little in, in just a second here. Um, shoulder injuries in archery typically, st typically stem uh, from the rotator cuff, you know, a complex system, muscles and tendons that stabilize the shoulder. You know, these injuries can manifest in tendonitis, bursitis, uh, or even tears. Uh, they can occur every time you draw your bow, you, you know, so you better make sure that you have that, you know, proper. Now, how your improper form can cause your injuries. You know, one of the things, jerky draw motions, you know, when you use a jerky motion to draw your bow, it places sudden and excessive strain on the shoulder. So you go out and you also you just really just slam it back as hard as you can, as quick as you can. You know, maybe you're drawing too much weight. The only way to get going is just to get that momentum going. You know, that you want to avoid that. Uh, that can cause problems. Um, you know, poor arm position, you know, incorrect arm position, you know, such as having the elbow too high or too low. Uh, can lead to imbalance in the muscles, you know, causing overstrain in the shoulder. So you get that elbow, you know, you get that elbow up and you turn that elbow way up, you know, or way down and, and it just doesn't put it in the good position. If you use that proper grip or the hand position on that riser into your hand contact, it's going to put that elbow in a good position. Make sure you drop in that shoulder. Um, you know, you know, overexertion is another uh, thing that we want to, uh, you know, address here a little bit, you know, continuously draw on the bro without proper back muscle engagement, can, you know, can exhaust your shoulder muscles leading to poor form and increase your injury risk. 
you know, go out there, use the back muscles to draw. Don't, don't use your shoulder and your arms. Those are the weak part. Use that back muscle because rather than trying to pull across your chest, you know, use, use your back muscle. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to be much easier and they're much stronger. Um, you know, using a bow with a pole weight that's too heavy, you know, there are, you know, the archers using that, you know, it can force the shoulder to compensate, you know, for increase, you know, that's going to increase the likelihood of an injury. Too much weight, you're not going to be able to relax that shoulder. You know, let's cut, talk a little, little, um, a little imagination here. You know, imagine an archer at full draw, the ideal form would have them engaging their back muscles, maintaining that straight line from the arrow through the draw arm, you know, to the shoulders. You know, however, if an archer relies solely on the shoulder to draw and hold the bow, the rotator cuff is unduly stressed. You know, this, you know, this important form, you know, this is important, you know, so especially when repeated over time, you know, that can lead to inflammation in the shoulders and even cause tears and shoulders. So make sure you're, you're having that relaxed, have somebody watch and see as you're drawing, does that shoulder pop up? That's something that you want to watch for. Um, you know, as you get older, you know, it's, it's, it's a little, little bit harder. So now once you've done that, let's, let's see, okay. How to recover from it? Well, um, rest, you know, the first most critical part, you know, for the injury is you need to take a break from archery, you know, allow the inflammation to subside and the soreness to go away. And then when you come back, you know, you're going to be better, just learn the correct form that and eliminate the form that caused that shoulder problem. Now, ice, you know, applying ice to the affected area can help reduce swelling. You know, ice is going to help relieve the pain. It's going to reduce the swelling. Uh, you want to use heat to loosen it up, but heat to, you know, recover from it. You know, then, then there's, you know, pain relief. You know, if you have some, uh, you know, like ibuprofen, you know, and Tylenol and, and those, you know, just make sure that what you're doing, you're not overdoing it. And don't keep taking, you know, more than you have to, um, you know, make sure that if there's something that you, you can't tolerate, you know, that, so, you know, there, there's aspirin, there's ibuprofen, there's Advil, there's all kinds of different ones. So, you know, the best way to do it is use, use one of those. Um, I would avoid any, you know, hard um, drugs, you know, for pain relief, you know, like your oxycodones and stuff like that, that has a whole bunch of other problems in it. You know, all you want, you know, ibuprofen good for reducing swelling in there and relieve some of the discomfort. Uh, you know, if you can tolerate ibuprofen, um, don't don't keep taking it for a long period of time because it can mess up, you know, other organs in you. Um, now, medical advice is always recommended. You know, get to a professional. You know, let the you know it. You know, that's essential part of you know getting diagnosed properly. You know, you might think okay, it's just sore, but maybe you got a tear. You know, so the doctor will be able to diagnose exactly what the problem was that with with it, it is. And um, especially if you go into a doctor that deals with athletes, um, you know, they're going to have different responses than when it's just a normal doctor because they're going to say, well, don't don't use it. You know, well, that's. You know, as an archer is like, OK, that's not the answer I'm looking for. I, I want to still be doing it. What can I do to, so I can still go through working it out? So maybe what you do is, you know, maybe, you know, the, you know, a physical therapist will have ways that you can still keep your strength up a little bit and not provide, you know, that strain on whatever your, your shoulder problem is. Uh, you know, maybe you're just working through a real light, you know, bands that just keep going through the motion, you know? So, but that's where, you know, the doctor and the physical therapist, you know, those all, um, come into to play and, and figuring out what your your path is forward um, you know then there's there's you know rehab exercises that you can do you know here's some of the things that I found some some of the research I did you know rotator cuff strengthening exercise you know that targets the rotator rotated cuff you know and that's vital for recovery you know uh, these might include you know internal and external rotation with resistance bands you know, keep through, just keep them loose and keep them going through. Um, then there's scapular stabilization, you know, which is strengthening the muscles around the shoulder blade, you know, can help 
help the rotator cuff to prevent future injuries. Um, you know, and, and I have articles that, you know, you can refer to to get a little better or get to a good doctor. Um, you know, flexibility, you know, incorporate stretches to maintain that proper range of motion. You know, go through some exercise where you're rotating your, your shoulders, you know, so that it can keep it loosened up and you can see where the stiff parts are and, and you can work through that. You know, maybe there's different exercises you can do, you know, to, to work through and, and keep those flexible. Um, now, here's, here's the part that we want to know. How do we return back to archery? You know, this is going to be a gradual thing. You know, if you've had a, a you know, major injury, now if it's just sore, you, sometimes you could just ice it, um, take a couple of ibuprofen, let it re relax for a few days, and then go. Other ones, you might take you longer. So what you might have to do is you might have to modify your practice. Um, when, when you're off for a while, when you start shooting again, you're going to have to work up slowly. You know, consider shorter sessions, you know, with the perfect form, you know, avoiding strain, you know, so don't go out there. If you're used to shooting two, 300 arrows at a time, when you start back, you're not going to shoot two, 300 arrows, you know, so maybe you go out and, and you shoot five arrows today and then you go along until that's not causing a problem, you know, and then maybe go to two rounds, you know, two rounds of five and then, um, you know, shoot five at a time or three at a time, you know, whatever target you're shooting at, you're shooting a three spot, shoot three, and then go pull them and come back and then rest, you know. And if you start getting to where it's starting to hurt, um, you know, you don't want to have pain, you know, it, it should, you should feel a little, little stress on it. But it, once it starts in the pain, now you've kind of back, you know, turned back. Um, you may do, you need to adjust your equipment, you know, the draw weight, you may need to crank it down to the minimum uh, to start with. You know, after, you know, you're using this for conditioning, not really trying to see how much draw weight you can have, you know, so lower that draw weight, you know, during recovery, your recovery process, you know, then you can always start gradually. Once you get back where you can shoot all the arrows that you were before, now then slowly start cranking the weight up if you want to shoot that higher weight. Now, you, you may keep it down low because that higher weight might have been what caused your problem to start with so you may have to if you're used to shooting at seven you may have to go down to 60 you know as we get older that's something that you know we may have to start adjusting you know we can't always shoot 70 as we're getting into our 60s and 70s we're in our 30s and 40s you know 70 was nothing well that gets a little harder so you need to take that an adjustment too it's like where you're going to recover to now let's go in a little bit of subject on if how to prevent injuries. You know, after all, that's that's where we want to be to start with. You know, you want to keep ongoing conditioning, you know, even after recovery. Um, you know, if you haven't had an injury or if you haven't had one, you know, continue shoulder exercises, you know, to keep the muscles flexible and, and strong. Um, and then form check, you know, you want to regularly check your form, you know, with a coach to ensure that you're not falling back to habits that could have caused the injury. So you know, one of the things you can do is take a video of your shooting, upload the raw video to Archer Talk 101 Facebook group and say, hey, you know, take a look at my form and let me know what you think. And we'll take a look at it. I've looked at many, many uh, videos and, you know, you can play them back and, and stop them, pause them. Um, you know, if I needed to, you know, I can upload it to uh, my video editing software and I can go frame at a time. So I can, you know, just hit the arrow key and go frame at a time. It's like, see what's going on in, in slow motion, basically. So uh, we can take a look at it and see what is going on with your form to help you prevent, you know, that shoulder injury. Now, some little bit of closing thoughts on, you know, shoulder injury, you know, recovering from a shoulder injury, it's a journey that requires patience and dedication. You know, follow these steps that I've talked about and work closely with medical professionals uh, you can return to archery stronger and, and more resilient. So that's just something that we want to take a look at. Uh, if you have a shoulder injury or even preventing it, you know, let's prevent it. You know, let's, let's work on your forms and, and not have that, um, uh, that problem if we can avoid it. Now, the next injury I want to talk about is tendonitis. You know, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of description of what it is. You may not know. Um, tendonitis is commonly known as archer's elbow. Um, you know, tennis players get it, you know, tennis elbow. You know, it's an inflammation um, 
uh, condition, you know, that affects the tendons, you know, you know, that's where you uh, robust fibrous tissue connecting the muscles to the bone. Um, that's what, that's what your tendons are, you know, um, in Archie, this condition frequently manifests in the elbow due to the repetitive nature of drawing and releasing the bow. Now, me, that's, that's going to be mostly the bow holding it because you can have the drawing elbow can be sore. There was one time when I could not carry anything in my right hand. I shoot right-handed and I had my release, my wrist strap on and, you know, if it's done correctly, but I could draw my bow at 70 pounds but I couldn't carry 10 pounds in that right hand. That's because of where the pressure goes. If your release is on your wrist, like it's supposed to be, we've talked about this several times, you can draw back and the pressure's not in the elbow. Now, if you're pulling back uh, on your hand, now then your pressure starts going into your elbow. So using a handheld, you're probably gonna have a little bit more pressure in the elbow. So if you're having a problem with your drawing elbow, you know, have your wrist strap, make sure it's on your wrist, not onto your hand. So if you put where the wrist is, if you your wrist, you, know, you can bend your hand up and down and that that wrist isn't moving or the release isn't moving, it's in proper place. So if you look at your hand, you go down, it gets smaller and then there's a little end of the bone, the forearm bone has a little knob on the end of it. You want your release above there and that's going to give you that best one to eliminate tendonitis in the drawing hand. Now, we're going to come cover over some biomechanical causes. That's kind of a long word, but uh, <laughs> well, we'll kind of we'll kind of we'll break it down. Um, you know, microtrauma to tendons is, is basically what we're, we're going to talk about here. You know, each time an archer draws the bow, the elbow ex and te elbow tendons experience a microtraumatic event. You know, over time, these small traumatic uh, uh, traumas can um, accumulate, you know, leading to a microscopic tears within the tendons, you know, and fibers. So, um, you know, that's something, you know, that proper form is going to help you out with that. Now, the other cause is overuse, you know, repetitive motions of drying the bow, especially with, with improper form or excessive practice, it, you know, continues to stress the tendon, suppress, you know, it's suppressing their ability to recover and, and remodel, um, you know, that less, you know, that leads into inflammation. Um, I know there's one time I was, I was in a, what they, they call it 10,000 pushups. So you're going to do all these pushups, you know, in, in a month, you want you to do 10,000. Well, I was going, you know, everything, you know, I did everything building up, building up, building up, you know, by the time I got done the out, you know, that month, my elbows would just wouldn't, wouldn't take it anymore. So that was that overuse because I didn't build up gradually. I was trying to do this challenge of 10,000 pushups in, in a month. Um, I did it, but you know, I, I kind of paid for it, you know, in, in the pain in my elbows. So you have to kind of stop and then recover. And, you know, that's one things you don't, don't want to do too much, too quick. Uh, you want to push yourself, you know, if, if you're shooting um, 60 arrows, and now so you always shoot six arrows. You never shoot any more than 60 arrows. Well, and you get, you get, um, you know, at the end, you're getting a little more tired because that's what you're used to. Well, in order to be able to shoot six arrows comfortably, you might need to shoot 100 arrows so that by the time you get to 100, now you're starting to get tired. But don't start off shooting 100 arrows. Start off with shooting, you know, whatever you can comfortably shoot. And then just, you know, after, you know, every week or so, and increase it by, um, I say five. You know, you start off and, you're you're struggling to get your form down. You know, you shoot five arrows, and and you're you're now your your form. You can feel your form not working right. Um, you might need to go back to some of the techniques we talked about earlier. I was shooting with your eyes closed. You know, to make sure that form is there. If that form goes away, then you want to make sure you take that. You know, one of the things you can do is when you start to practice off, take three or four shots with your eyes eyes closed, and it's like okay, form feels good, and then shoot your practice. Um, you know, it just, that's just one of the things overuse can, it's easy to do, you know, and those of us that they're athletes and we, we want to push and push and push and push. And, and then when we think we're tired, we're going to push some more. Um, that's good to a point, but as we get older, yeah, that don't work too well, <laughs> you know, and, and there again, we're going to talk about improper technique. 
you know, that's kind of a theme along here. You notice improper technique is going to ca can cause problems. So um, drawing the bow with incorrect arm or wrist position, you know, that alters the load distributed, you know, across the tenons, you know, which causes the excessive, you know, excessive strain uh, on those tenons. Now, let's talk about some physical responses to the problems we've talked about. One is inflammation, you know, in response to the micro traumas, the body initiates an inflammation, infl inflammatory process. It basically swells up, <laughs> which is characterized by pain, you know, swelling and reduced range of motion, you know, and, and you, as it inflames, then now you're, it's getting tight. Um, I have a problem with my one knee that it's constantly giving me a problem because I didn't realize at one time it was swollen up a little bit. And I was in my martial arts class and I, you know, I knelt down and all of a sudden, you know, that swelling forced that knee, uh, knee joint away from where it's supposed to be. And I've had problem with it ever since because, you know, I popped it out. So I weakened it. The, the tenon. So, you know, that's something you have to deal with is, you know, if your body is swollen up, you need to make sure you alter what you're doing. And then there's degenerative changes. You know, chronic tendonitis can lead to degenerative changes, you know, within a tendon structure, you know, that, that compromises its strength and elasticity. And, you know, then that increases the risk of injury. So that's something that you want to look at too. You know, as we get older, we need to look at what is changing in, in our body. Now, how do you recover from it? Well, basically the same as the rest of them, you know, rest, you know, that's the cornerstone of, of recovery is rest. You know, that's, that, that's going to be the whole thing, you know, allow that inflammation and tendons to heal. You know, this, this may involve not practicing archery in a while, you know, for a while. Ice, just like before, you know, apply it to the affected area that re reduces inflammation. Um, you know, like we talked about, you know, ibuprofen, Aldeve, you know, all those different different things, over-the-counter stuff. Just make sure you don't abuse them too much. Um, now, there is medic medication that you can use, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, those you could take, you know, that's like an ibuprofen. Uh, they can be used to manage pain and inflammation during an acute phase. Uh, so, you know, ibuprofen is good for the inflammation. Uh, so that would probably be, well, that is my first choice. And then, you know, maybe some Tylenol or something. And then, of course, you can go to physical therapy. You know, the physical therapist can tailor uh, a routine for you to go to to rehab from that, you know, focus on the strengthening of the forearm muscles, you know, and improve the tendon resilience, resiliency. And, and now then, what we really want to know is how to prevent them. You know, so that is going to be the thing. How do we prevent that tendonitis? Well, warm up is one, you know, engaging in a thorough warm up your routine, you know, before you practice, you know, that can, you know, prepare the tendons for, you know, demands of archery, you know, just grab it first thing up and grab it and pull it back. You know, that you might need to warm up a little bit, you know, move around or whatever. Uh, you need to do, you know, go through that range of motion, you know, go through, do some stretching, some, you know, so whatever you want to do to, to help loosen up the muscles and you'll find what works best for you. And you can always talk to a coach or um, a physical therapist to give you ideas on that. And, um, you know, of course you could always, you know, Google ideas and, and look on YouTube and uh, just remember that, you know, they're telling you what they want to tell you, not, not necessarily the best for you. Uh, so, you know, when you do find some stuff, you know, see if it's something that's going to work for you. You know, working with the coach, that's that's important. You know, they can refine that shooting technique, you know, to ensure, you know, that you're not unduly stressing those tenons. You know, and then again, you know, maybe adjust the equipment, you know, using a bow with a, a proper draw weight. You know, that can... Uh, put stress on it. If it's too long of a draw length, that arm is stretched out and you, and you, you don't have all that. That that, raised, that straightens that elbow out so it doesn't have any place to go. The shoulder is raised up when your arm's stretched all the way out. You know, that proper technique is going to drop that shoulder down, relax that elbow, so you're not, you're not putting strain on it. Now, if you have some, um, you know, physical reason why you can't have your arm bent, um, you know, then, you know, get with the coach because we can work through other techniques you can use to have them. 
I know I worked with a guy with MS and if he had his arm bent, um, he would shake so much. So we, we did it. So we locked it. We figured out how we could get it so he could lock that arm out so he could at least be steady. Uh, so there's things that we can do to help out in those, you know, if you can't get your head in that proper position because your wrist just doesn't bend that way, you know, you've had an injury, can't, well, then we can work with that to see how can we get that hand and technique that's going to provide the rest of your arm to line up correctly. You know, one of the things you want to do, you know, understand, you know, these kind of details, you know, on the tendonitis, you know, how it develops and addressing, you know, the, the contributing factors, you know, archers can affect effectively manage and prevent the common, this common condition, you know, it's crucial to listen to your body and respond to the appropriate appropriately to the signs, you know, or pains or discomfort. Now, <clears throat> We're going to talk about something that's not quite as normal as you as you would think. Um, you know, we're going to talk about string slap. Now, that's different from the your string hitting your forearm. You know, if you hit your forearm, that's going to cause a big problem, and that is cause majority of the time by too long of a draw length and improper grip on the bow because you're gripping it like a baseball bat instead of like a, a bow. So that puts that arm in the way. Now, string slap is something a little bit different because that is generally, if you wear a watch, between the watch and your wrist is where it's going to slap it. You know, I don't know if you can see, but right in, for those that are watching, you can see you know, right in here is where I get the string slap. Now, what that is, because I don't hang onto the bow, and as the bow jumps forward, because I have an older bow, um, it's going to jump forward. And what that is, is when that bow is jumping forward, it's catching a little bit of that, that arm because mm -hmm. that's kind of where it's at. Um, that's past the, the where, where the bow normally sits. So one of the things you can do um, is, you know, the incor incorrect grip, you know, where you're gripping too tightly or in proper alignment. You know, that's what it's talking about here is that that puts that arm in in the way of the bow. So you want to look at that. Um, you know, improperly rotating your elbow. So you got that and you've got your elbow outwards, you know, you leave it in the inner forearm, you know, vulnerable to being struck. So uh, you just want to make sure that you have that proper, uh, you know, form. Um, a long draw link, draw link. That's the one thing we talked about, you know, the, the long draw link that puts that arm in, uh, in the way. Um, a real low brace height bow. Those that have real low brace height is more likely to catch your arm or your, your up there on your wrist, you know, above where your watch normally would go um, because the, the string, as the string leaves the bow, you know, where it's at at rest, when the bow leaves, that actually string actually goes forward some until the arrow pops off and then it comes back and it vibrates back and forth. So when you see it in slow motion, it does quite a bit of vibrating back and forth. That's where you put the string dampeners on it because that vibration is, is like you pluck a string on a guitar. You know, it's going to make noise with dampeners on which dampens that vibration. Uh, so that's just a little little bit more of a tidbit of information. <laughs> you know, shooting a, a closed stance, which is what I teach, you know, you're going to get more because that arm is out straight. You're going to get a little bit of a string slap on that. Now, when mine hits my wrist, I look at it's like, oh, it's red. I don't even notice it because it's it doesn't really hit it hard. You can see after I shoot for quite a few, you can see a little red start in the form. Uh, no real pain with it. But if you do hit them really hard, Here's some recovery tips. You know, you want to, you know, as quick as you can, you want to remember uh, the rice, which is rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So if you do get a, a big urge where it, you swelling up and everything on there, you know, you want to stop shooting. You know, you don't want to keep hitting anymore. I've seen archers, they hit that, and that part of that forearm up there, and it just swells up. And then they shoot again, and they hit it again, and they shoot it again, and they hit it again. You know, every time you hit it, you're going to cause more and more damage. So, um, you know, if you hit it, you know, it probably told you you're doing something wrong. So fix what you're doing wrong because uh, you should never be hitting your arm. Now, if you're shooting a recurve or a longbow, uh, those are a little bit harder because that you, you you have to hang on to them a little bit or even wrap your index finger and thumb, you know, touch your index finger to your thumb just so you can hold it. Uh, they're not, um, you know, quite as easy. That's why I use arm guards on there. Put that arm guard on. If you're shooting one of those that you hit in your arm like that, put an arm guard on there. And of course, ice. 
you know, that just remember rice, rest, ice, compression, elevation. So you want to rest it. You want to ice it, keeps swelling down, keeps pain down. Compression. You use a compression bandage for, for swelling. If it swells up, you know, as soon as you can, wrap it and keep that pressure down. Um, I know this works really well. Um, when I was doing martial arts, you know, we would get all of a sudden, you know, with somebody, you or somebody else would would bang up their, their shin and all of a sudden it would just swell up. So the first thing we'd do is we'd take, kind of hard to do it yourself because you inflict a little bit of pain, but you'd take your hand and you'd push down on where it swelled up. You'd push down and you'd hold it and hold it and hold it. You'd put a lot of pressure on it. And then next thing you know, when you take it away, the swelling's gone. You heal in just a matter of a day or two, where if you left it, you're 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 going to have a healing time of a week or better. So that's something we learn, you know, going to martial arts. You know, we're we're always banging up stuff. You know, when 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 you're sparring and your your shin hits their shin, your your shin shows up. We take care of it. You know, same thing on anything else. You want to compress it and then hold it, and then once it does it, now what the body does, it goes through time, it swells up, and then it heals and shrinks back down. So what you've done is you've eliminated time for it swelling up and, and the swelling to go back down. You've eliminated all that time. And now it can go to the healing part because now the swelling's gone down. Uh, and then, of course, the other thing is elevation and keep it elevated. Um, you know, so whatever it is, keep it elevated above your heart anyway. Um, you don't have to necessarily be above your head, but at least above your heart. And that helps keep the blood from flowing down into it. It's flowing away from it. Or if it's in a leg injury, you know, lay down, put your leg up or something. Um, you know, if you're home, lay on the floor, put your foot up on the couch, you know, something like that. You know, then after that initial treatment where it's it's healed, now you want to heat, you know, put heat on it. That helps boost the circulation and relieve the pain. You know, there, you know, stuff like aloe vera, you know, that may help you putting on top of it uh, and other things to help in the healing. Uh, there are some other stuff that, uh, you know, I have that, you know, I'll go through and I'll put on there for help for healing. There's some essential oils that you can use. You don't have to do your own research on that. You know, what what would work good for what you're doing? Because depending on what what's going on is how you prepare it and whatnot. So uh, there's there's sources for that. You can just Google, you know, essential oils and find, you know, find a place to use it. Uh, I I go get mine from a place called doTERRA. Um, not that, you know, where you get it from doesn't matter. Just make sure you get some good quality stuff. Now, from let, let's take a look at um, from a coach's viewpoint, you know, on preventing that string slap. You don't want to relax your grip. You know, you want to maintain a firm yet relaxed grip, you know, with your knuckles, you know, 45 degree angle uh, to the riser. You know, that that is going to get that angle going through between the index and the thumb down to between the two meaty parts between your little finger and your thumb. Um, you know, make sure that elbow gets rotated properly. And, and if you have a slight bend in your arm, you have that grip that's going to put that elbow in the right place. Um, you want to make sure that your equipment is set up correctly. You know, the appropriate draw length and, and brace height. Um, you know, the brace height can, can change things. And um, if you have too short of a brace height, that you're not going to change too much on brace height unless you're shooting recurves or, or long bows because shorter strings, longer strings is going to change that brace height. Well, on a compound bow, you're really not going to be able to change much on the brace height just because of the way they're set up. So now one of the things you can do if, if you're always hitting that arm or we teach a lot of new ones is, you know, a very new archer, I'll teach them the close dance, but you might be, able, you might be one of those that you have to shoot a little bit more open stance, which means instead of that arm going straight out to the side, it's tilt forward just a little bit so basically how i i tell is line your toes up put an arrow on your tips of your toes point to your target well an open stance you're going to slide that front foot back slightly you know maybe an inch is all it takes maybe two inches maybe three inches you know experiment with that to see what gives you the best position in your form uh, you know and then there's there's protective gear you know you know while while the jet you know the technical adjustments you know adjusting your technique and your equipment you know there's always protect you put an arm guard on you know if you if you have a tendency to hit it more often put an arm guard on you just have to watch your 
string because if your string is hitting it, you need to have serving where it's going to hit the uh, the arm guard. That's why, like on traditional bows, you're going to find a center where you're going to put your knock point, you go up three and down six. The down six is because that hits your arm guard. Uh, now on a compound bow, you only need Megan at, at an inch above, an inch below where you're going to put your knock in there. You don't need all that under because you're not hitting your arm. Now, if you are hitting your arm, you're going to need to, you know, serve a little bit down, down a little further. Now, here's here's something else that happens sometimes, not as much. Uh, depend, you know, if you have more of a closed stance, it might happen more. Uh, a real long axle axle bow can happen a little bit more, um, and that's uh, chest bruising. You know, the chest bruising in archery, you know, is typically a result of the bow making contact with the chest area, you know, during release of the arrow. Um, you know, that can cause, you know, contusions and, you know, discoloration and pain and sometimes swelling. Um, you'll see some of your target archers will have actually a, a mesh thing that goes over that side. So it slides across that mesh instead of, you know, across their, their chest. Um, you know, so you need to look at that. You know, ladies, you have a little bit more uh, to think about up there as well. So you want to make sure that when you draw that bow back, that string is at a position where it's not going to scrape across your chest. You know, the shorter axle axle bows, you really don't have to worry about it because that string is such a short angle, it's not going to scrape across you. You know, if you're shooting at a traditional bow or a really long axle axle bow, that string is a, not as sharp of an angle. So now it's going to come down a little bit further. So you need to look at that. Um, you know, overdrawn can be one of those things you, you're drawn too far back. So, um, you know, basically you're in proper form. We're back to form again. You know, improper form is can cause you know those problems. Uh, loose clothing is another thing uh, that we don't really think about too much. But if you're wearing loose clothing, you know it it can catch that loose clothing, and although it may not bother you physically, it's going to affect the way the string is released. You know, or or may you know grabs that clothing and maybe it pulls the string right into you and slaps against your chest. Uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of things in there. Um, if you're wearing a necklace, uh, take it off. Uh, don't have anything dangling down in front of you because if that string catches that necklace or whatever you have on there, it's going to rip it right off. And if it's a pretty tough, you know, band, it's going to yank your on your neck. Uh, so always, always tell archers: do not wear any necklaces. Uh, if if you you know do have to have it on, put it underneath your shirt, so it's not hanging out. And if it's too short to fit underneath your shirt, it's probably going to be okay anyway because it's not in the way of the string. Just make sure anything dangles down, um, uh, whatever side you're shooting from. If you're right-handed, don't have anything in your pockets in your left pocket. If you're going to do anything, put it in the right pocket, and, or or put it somewhere else. Um, anything in that pocket can get caught and and ripped out. And again, how to recover from it? Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Now, a chest is a little bit harder to elevate it, but you, you might have to just you rest, eliminate what you're doing, recover from it. Ice, um, you know, it's it's a little hard to put compression on your chest because you got your your chest, you, you aren't going to be able to breathe, get much compression on there. Uh, but you know, ice it down if you need to. Um, you know, and there there again, you can take you know for pain management. You know, take whichever medicine, you know, ibuprofen is always good, you know, Advil, Tylenol, uh, you know, all those, all those are good. You just got to make sure that that pain medicine is something that you can tolerate. Uh, so that's something that you, you know, know from your, your doctor, um, you know, you can find out from your doctor, you know, what's, what's the case is this, you know, they'll, they'll know, they should know your history. You should know your history and know that you can take this and this, you can't take this. So you just need to know what that is. Um, you know, and if the pain um, continues, you know, you made physical therapy or you may have, you know, talk to, you know, the doctor and say, okay, here's what I did. Um, and, you know, what can we do? You know, the doctors can help you out with that. Now, preventing it, and all, we don't want to go through that if we don't have to. Um, you know, one thing, proper tire, you know, in, you know, we encourage you to wear um, tight fitting clothes, you know, and 
you know, other, other, you know, nice tight fitting supportive um, equipment, um, you know, that minimizes the risk, you know, contact. So, uh, you know, use, use a chest guard, you know, if you have a problem with that, use a chest guard. It can, it's, you know, that chest guard is a protective layer between you and the string. So it that not going to hit you. It's going to slide across to protect, you know, that chest guard. Uh, and then, you know, your form, you know, you need to maintain, you know, that proper form that you use so that you can do that, you know. Uh, so understanding these, you know, implement some of these things we talked about, you know, that can minimize the risk of chest bruising, you know, recover involves, you know, proper care um, and medical attention, you know, the quicker you get that, the quicker you can return back, you know, to shooting your bow. Here is another thing that we want to talk about, and that's muscle strain. So muscle strain in archery typically affects the upper body, you know, particularly the shoulders, the arms, the back, you know, results in, you know, overstretching or tearing muscle, you know, uh, you know, during the activity, you know, that, that requires, you know, you know, the activity that requires a, a required sudden or explosive movement, like drawing the bow, you know, that, that is going to cause a muscle strain. And that's why I, I tell new archers that you need to have the draw, bow, bow weight such that you can slowly draw that bow back. So let's say you're out hunting and that deer is there where they can see any, you know, big movement, but you can still draw if you're really slow. So you, you slowly draw that bow back and now you're at your full draw and you haven't made any quick sudden movements that is going to help you know muscle strain um you know what causes it you know overexerting you know pulling the string you know too much draw weight you know that exceeds your strength um one good example of this is you know i was shooting 70 pounds and i shot you know all summer long and you know shooting 3ds and everything it, it's 70 pounds and come hunting season here you know middle of september and I quit practicing because now my bow's set up to shoot broadheads, you know, because I, I only had one bow and I'd have, I'd have, you know, my broadhead set up and then when I was done and I'd reset it up for the summer. So I didn't practice anymore. Well, one morning it, it's nice and cool out. I'm in my tree stand and I, I like to, when I get my tree stand, you know, I got my safety belt on, everything's all ready. I'm knocking arrow, you know, because I don't have a place I can hang it. Well, I'm going to draw my bow back. And let down just to make sure you know everything is good everything is still good that last check well i couldn't pull my bow back so i was straining and straining and straining well i ex over exerted some of my muscles and now then you know i was in pain for a while so i decided okay i'm either gonna sit here and maybe be able to draw my bow back later um or just go home well i decided to sit there well, you know, after sitting for another an hour or so, uh, I, I tried, you know, okay, I drew my bow back, but I was sore because I overexerted the muscles. Now, the other thing that can cause, cause it is poor technique. Again, back to your shooting form. You know, that can cause uneven muscle loading, you know, increase the risk of that strain. Uh, you know, there again, <laughs> you know, inadequate warm up. That's the thing. I, I kind of see a little theme here, you know, now, improper form, um, not warming up, not being smooth. That was one of the things going to cause all these problems, you know, it, you know, failing to warm up properly, you leave the muscle stiff. You know, that's what I did. It's like, I didn't really try to lo loosen up or anything. I just tried pulling a bow back and, you know, that's, that's what caused it, you know, and now then uh, fatigue. You know, as you keep using them, you know, muscle endurance, you know, that plays a significant role. You know, when your muscles tire, you know, they lose their ability to, you know, absorb energy and, and leading to strain. You know, the, the fatigue, you know, I was building up. I had a good muscle, you know, mass so I could shoot my bow just just fine. Um, in fact, at 70 pounds, I was, I'd shoot a 300 round at 70 pounds. Um, but then I stopped doing it. So basically... As I'm doing this, I'm fatiguing. Now, the other thing you can do is, when, you know, in fatigue, you know, you're, you're shooting and shooting and shooting. And, you know, maybe you're at a 3D and 
you know, you've got a lot of hills, you know, going up and down hills, constantly up and down hills. And, and you're wore out by the time you get to the, you know, you've got 40 targets. And by the time you get to number 10, you're worn out. So you're, you're already fatigued, but you, you, you've only got 25% done. So that's something you have to look at too, you know, get ready for that. Now, then, you know, how to recover from muscle fatigue. Well, there goes the rice again. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. You know, that's what you're going to do again. That's how you're going to recover. Just remember that if you have an injury, rest it, ice it, compression, and elevation. That's what's going to, uh, you know, take care of it. Um, you know, there, there may be, you know, physical therapy might be what you need to do to recover from it. Uh, and now let's go back into, you know, from from the coach's view, you know, the view I would take is, you know, you want to ensure the archers have correct form. There again, form, you know, build the muscles, you know, you, you want to handle the stress of drawing the bow. So if you know, you're going to go to a tournament where you're going to shoot 60 arrows one day, 60 arrows the next day, and it's a 3D tournament, 60 arrows the next day. By the time you get done with that third day, you might be really worn out. So to prepare for it, maybe what you need to do is you need to start shooting 60 arrows a day, you know, three days in a row. Um, you know, it might be a little, little bit tougher, you know, if you're working on a Friday, but, you know, get off work Friday night and shoot 60 arrows Friday, 60 arrows Friday or Sunday or Saturday morning, um, 60 arrows Sunday morning, because uh, a lot of tournaments are only going to be morning or whatever. Um, and then once you get it, get in that whistle, well, maybe you need to shoot instead of 60 arrows, you need to shoot an extra 10 arrows, you know? So then now, then by the time you get to that third day, um, or even if you have, you might have different, um, tournaments where you might shoot 60 arrows on Friday and then tournaments, you're going to shoot 60 arrows in the morning and then you got 60 arrows at night. So look and see what the tournament is doing, what you're going to have to do and prepare for that. You know, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, you want to do is, is try and go through and, you know, get that strength built up where you can handle it. Uh, come up with a warm up routine. We've talked about this, you know, it's third time now, or just every time we talk about a, a pain or an injury, you need to warm up. So come up with a routine that works best for you and then go through and do that before you shoot. Um, you know, and then, the other thing is, you know, the bow, is it the proper draw weight and the proper draw, draw length? That is going to be the, the biggest thing, you know, and then, you know, rest periods during your practice, you know, to prevent the fatigue, you know, how much time are you going to need to you, do to recover? That's why if you're shooting five spots, you shoot five arrows, you wait for everybody you're done shooting five arrows, you go pull your arrows, you come back, you have time between that you're not shooting and then you shoot five more arrows. Um, and then same thing there. So when you're practicing, if you're shooting a five spot or you're shooting, if you're shooting a three spot, you're going to shoot three arrows and then you're going to go pull them and shoot three arrows. You do, you shoot them by yourself. You're going to shoot a lot quicker than you would at a, at a, a tournament. So you may need to shoot those arrows, pull those arrows. Um, and it, as you're writing down your score, log what your scores are and tell, you know, how you felt for each one. And then that'll kind of take care of the extra time in there. Yeah. You know, by understanding all these things we kind of talked out about here, you know, on uh, on this subject, you know, that's going to help you return quicker to shooting. You know, and, and a little, little conclusion here, you know, as we draw this session to a close, remember that archery, like any sport, carries a risk of injury. But with the right knowledge, preparation, and respect for the craft, uh, these risks can be minimized whether you're dealing with string slap, archer's elbow, or muscle strain, um, or, or shoulder problems, uh, the path recovery is clear. You know, proper care uh, is rest and gradual return to form, um, to that proper form, you know, and prevention. You know, this is all about the techniques, training, and, and listen to your body. You know, so take these lessons we've talked about here so far and apply them to your practice and always aim for, uh, safety as much as you can aim uh, for the well's eye, you know, until your next, until our next session, you know, keep your arrows flying straight and your spirits high. Uh, this is Roy Canterbury. I've been your host today on our Chuck 101 and, and your coach for, for this, this session. So shoot safely 
everyone and stay tuned. So the next one, the next podcast um, would be the next lesson will be on, you know, what to look for and how to care for your equipment, whether it's a longbow recurve compound or, or crossbow. You know, there's some things that you need to look at, you know, to check on your equipment. We're going to cover that in the next lesson. Uh, so stay tuned for that. You know, thanks for tuning in um, to Arch Talk 101 podcast. Uh, don't forget uh, to join the Arch Talk 101 Facebook group if you have not already. Uh, there you're going to see live podcasts as well as replays, expert device, expert advice. Um, you know, replays are also available um, on my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix Yourself, and at archtalk101.com. And those that prefer to listen, you can listen on Spotify as well as audible.com. And I will put uh, links to the articles that I that I used for reference in here. Now, like I said, there's about 30, 35 different articles that I was able to reference and pull information from. Uh, so you, you're more welcome to look at those, get more detail. And if you have any more questions, just uh, you know, let me know and we'll we'll cover those as we we need to. And so for right now, we're gonna call this one over and make sure you uh, follow us and we'll answer any questions you happen to have.